obviously we have been pioneer and uh, but more than the past I think the future is indeed uh, very important and the objective, the objective is obviously that we want to keep showing the way. Uh, first thing that we are continuing developing is our uh, Candom Academy. The Candom Academy is the uh, online uh, for free available online educational platform on sustainable finance and sustainable investing. We are now uh, translating it to uh, many different languages so it's accessible uh, across Europe for, uh, for all people so not only English uh, native speaking but also German, uh, even Italian uh, and also French. We're adding models to that to further uh, let it evolve because the space is obviously uh, evolving at a very uh, fast pace. And in the same spirit, uh, we're also setting up uh, collaborations with many universities uh, across Europe to further enhance and improve our, our knowledge and expertise in modeling sustainability risks and opportunities to inform our investment processes. So that's more on, on the educational side, I would say. On the investment side, there's a lot of stuff to be done. Uh, we are uh, fully, uh, we are working on, on really fully integrating ESG integration, ESG into our uh, traditional investment processes. Obviously, that requires quite a bit of collaboration with investment teams, uh, both in fixed income, equity, and, and asset allocation. But all, not only the front office side, also the back office IT is involved. So that's a very ambitious project that will be deployed uh, over the next year. And then, uh, obviously, in line with the European taxonomy. We have been working on, and based on our EG philosophy, we have been working on thematic investing. So we will uh, put into the market uh, very specific uh, investment solutions that uh, dive a little deeper into specific ESG issues and try to come forward with, with uh, a, a solution. And then the last thing, I think, uh, in line again with uh, European taxonomy, but we've been doing it for quite some time now, is disclosure. So uh, we've started uh, reporting impact factors for some of our ESG funds and now we're starting to uh, deploy that across the board for all our ESG funds and more and more for segregated accounts. In a way they were articulated in the preamble of the COP21 Paris Agreement, but I think given the challenge that we face with climate change, the social issues have been a little bit uh, set aside. And uh, I think uh, that is unjustified. Uh, what we see now is, uh, I did an, an webinar on the just transition, uh, obviously uh, also with the climate action and, and uh, with you. I think what it kind of articulates is, is the necessity to really integrate social issues into an investment processes. We have been doing that for many years, Candim, we're very used to that. But I think what we see now is with, with uh, the Gilets Jaunes here in Paris, uh, uh, populism popping up, I think Social disruption is not an option for, uh, for financial markets. It won't help financial returns. So I think the awareness of integrating social, <coughs> social issues into an investment process is becoming more and more part of the agenda. And I think uh, it will become more and more important uh, also from a policy perspective. And that's where we need, obviously, uh, policy makers to step in what they want to achieve in that regard. I think the European taxonomy is, has been a very ambitious uh, project. It's very courageous for the European Union uh, as one of the first regions worldwide to set out an agenda that clearly supports uh, sustainable finance. It's ambitious, but it will also be challenging. I think the future will definitely be that uh, at some point uh, policymakers will need to step in and define and integrate ESG into the fiduciary duty. That would kind of uh, democratize and, and kind of uh, m uh, underline the importance of environmental, social and governance issues for investment processes to contribute to sustainable economic development. So I see a lot of uh, work to be done on, on fiduciary duties, defining what it means, how it should be integrated. And then obviously I think the next step, and that's what has been mentioned today, I've, I did it also during the panel, I think disclosure is absolutely key. Uh, make it mandatory, mandatory. Uh, it's definitely not going to be perfect, but that's not, not really an issue, it's going, to be ev it's going to be evolving, and I think policy makers really need to step in uh, from that perspective too. I 
It's been an enormous success. Uh, if you look compared to last year, uh, we are over 300, I think, participants. Uh, so that's an incredible increase, and it's kind of demonstrates uh, the impact that sustainable finance has on our industry. More and more people are looking at it. For me, I think the, the top key takeaways are, uh, obviously we have had fantastic moderators like Mike and then uh, some fantastic uh, keynote speakers, but the key takeaways are two things. So it's pretty clear that, first of all, everybody's now fully embracing sustainability and, and really confirms that it can be and, and is material for an investment process, apart from the more ethical or moral considerations you might have if you focus on generating financial returns or modeling risks, ESG should be part of that. So that's for me pre, uh, pre, uh, the first important key takeaway. And the second one, like I mentioned before, I think what is very clear now is that policymakers need to step in. Uh, I think many investors like Kandem are already doing a lot of stuff, uh, but to steer our economy to a more sustainable economic model, I think investors can't do it on their own. We really, really need policymakers to step in, define and clarify the setting within which investors and companies should work.